Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Show Tunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be getting into is how to pick up objects or say for instance pick up a weapon object and equip it onto your character. Now this of course is going to be a basic uh, tutorial. It's only going to be using weapons that you have already equipped to your character and that you want to be able to activate whenever. So let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk up to this axe and we're going to press E. Once we do that we're going to right click and as you can see, we now have our weapon, which is perfect. Now we're going to walk up to this mall. Now while our weapon's active, we're going to go ahead and press C, and as you can see, it switches it out. And of course, we can attack using that as well. Of course, you can detach it, pull it back up. If you want to walk back over here, you know, close out your weapon, click it in, you can switch it out just like so. Super cool. So let's go ahead and check out what we have here and how we have this set up. So the first thing that you're going to need, obviously, is a weapon attached onto your character with an animation for your weapon. Now, we're not going to be covering the weapon animations or anything like that in this tutorial, but I will be talking about where you're going to have your weapons and, of course, how to access those. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to find the skeleton on your character, right? So my character right here has this little... Um, skeleton, it goes all the way down, go past the chest, and we're going to be looking for the right arm. Now, once you find the right arm, you're going to find the hand. And inside the hand, you're going to put your weapons. So, as you can see, I have two different weapons equipped right here. I have an axe and a dwarf mace. Now, both of these weapons I have disabled just by selecting this um, set active as false. And, of course, I just put them right there. Now, as I said before, for your animations to work out properly, just make sure that you have those set up just right. Now, for these particular um, items at all, I attached a capsule collider on them for uh, my damage, and both of them are set to triggers. And of course, we also have this deal damage script. Now, of course, we're not covering this script inside of this tutorial. I believe I have already covered this script inside a previous tutorial. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and disable these right now. Just make sure that you put those inside the hand of your character. And after that, you're going to notice we have two different items inside the scene. Right. So we have this maul and we have this axe. And of course, we have a capsule collider on them. Now, I originally intended to actually make this a Raycast tutorial, but when I was working with this project and all, uh, I realized that Raycast really was not practical for a third-person character and all, especially if you're working as an RPG game. I mean, it's perfect for FPSs, but sucks for third-person games. So this tutorial is actually going to be focusing on accessing these things using the collisions, similar to triggers, but we're going to be using collisions instead. So as you can see, we have our capsule colliders. This is so when we interact with them. And of course, we're going to be covering the script. Now the script is going to be very simple. We're not going to be covering all that information that's actually for a game I've been working on, um, but we're going to be covering the basics of what we're doing here. So let's go and roll up, and at the top, you're going to see a couple things. So we have right here a public game object called right hand weapon, a maul, and an axe. So, of course, the right hand weapon stands for what weapon we are going to be using, or we're going to be replacing that value with, of course, the maul and the axe, or whatever weapon you want to add. So, say, for instance, we want to add a sword, a spear, you know, whatever you want to add. Just keep on adding it right there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say public bull weapon active. So weapon active just means, okay, is our weapon active or not? You know, if it's active, then you we can attack. If it's not active, we can't attack. Uh, pretty simple. And of course, at the top, you're going to see a couple of things like uh, an audio source, axe out, axe in, axe hit, axe swing. Those are just for sound effects. You can add them if you want to. They're not necessary at all, but uh, you know, just for sound effects and all, that's just cool. 
And of course, inside our void start function, we want to automatically set our mall on x to equal false. So just in case you didn't disable them inside of the um, inspector and all, you could just simply disable them here. And of course, weapon active is equal to false. So we're automatically setting our bool to equal false. That way, we don't have our weapon just hanging out immediately. OK, so we're going to roll down now. And we're going to find, of course, how to activate our weapon. So this, of course, is inside the void start function. And it's a very simple script. So here we have if we press the left, no, right. If we press the right mouse button down, um, then this effect will happen. So if our weapon is active, we're going to disable it. So basically, our weapon active is equal to false now. And we set our animation for um, deactivating our weapon. And so weapon active is equal to false. And it sort of, you know, plays an animation clip and all. Uh, right hand weapon dot set active is equal to false. So now our weapon hand is no longer showing anything. And of course, accent play is now going to be playing, right? And of course, we're going to be disabling our mall and disabling our axe. Then we're going to say else. So if this right here is not true, so basically if weapon active is equal to false, then we're going to activate it to be equal to true. We're going to set our animation equal to true. We're going to set our weapon hand equal to true. And of course, when we, we play our sound effect for drawing our weapon out. So it's a pretty basic script right here. And all you need to do is just add that right there. Uh, I'll go and leave it on there for a second so you guys can see that. Um, I'm not actually going to be able to post this script into the description or the comments because it's just, you know, too many things going on. And it would just be way too hectic. So you'll just have to add these individually later on. Okay, so we have our little attack script right here. You don't necessarily need this. I added it because, you know, it's for my third person game and all. Uh, but basically, if we press our left click down and our weapon is active, then we're going to be able to set a trigger called attack, which I'll show you my animation uh, controller in a second, of course. And then we also have axe swing dot play. So basically, our sound effect, we're going to be playing that as well. So pretty cool. And now if we roll down. Uh, we're going to go underneath our void on collision stay. If you don't have this, it's very simple to do. Uh, make sure that you're outside any other voids. And you're going to just simply put void on collision stay. It's that easy. And if you're using the newest vis uh, Visual Studios and all, um, then it will automatically add these inside there. If you don't have that, you just need to add those. And all it's doing is it's finding the collision on the object that you collided with. And it's basically going to be grabbing that individual collision. So you don't need to worry about that. That's just for my own personal thing um, right here. So this is a, actually a very simple script. And you just need to copy this individual script. Um, basically, per game object that you're going to be using. So if you have a sword, if you have a maul, a shield, whatever you have, uh, you're going to need to add individual ones for each one of those. So, I mean, if there's a better way, uh, let me know inside the comment section below. I would love to be able to apply that to my game and all. Uh, so, yeah, just putting it out there. All right, so here we have if collision.gameObject.name. So we're grabbing the collision of the object. Uh, we're finding the name if it's equal to mall. So make sure that your game object is named whatever name you have here or of course vice versa. Then we're gonna say if input dot get key down key code dot e so whenever we press e and weapon is active uh, so if it's equal to true then we're going to pretty much do the same thing we did when activating our weapon. So we're going to play the animation for weapon active we're going to play the sound for uh, axe in we're going to equip our weapon so right hand weapon is equal to maul and we're going to set active mall 
and we're going to deactivate X. Otherwise, so with our else if statement, just if you press the E key, uh, while we're up against the object or putting pressure on the object, now all it's going to do is going to say right hand weapon is equal to mall. So now it's not going to equip it, but it is going to apply it to our right hand weapon. So whenever we do equip our weapon, it will actually, um, you know, switch. And of course, this is a, the exact same copy of the previous function right here. All it's doing is just changing the value to X instead and our right hand weapon to X. And of course, setting X equal to true on our set active and our mall equal to false on our set active. So yeah, and of course, on the else if statement at the bottom, you're just changing it to X. It's pretty much straightforward. Okay, and lastly, we're going to cover the animation controller. Uh, so let's go and check that out. Uh, it's very simple. So with our load weapon, um, that actually I don't think we need. Um, so let me take a look at that real fast. Yeah, we don't need that. That's what's actually an animation for collecting and all. Um, okay, so let me open up this eye real fast. And here we have this idle attack. So this is if our weapon is out. Um, you can notice two different variables from the last time we did this tutorial and all. Um, we have a weapon active and an, act, and an attack trigger, right? So the weapon active decides whether or not we are going to be going from normal idle to idle attack. Um, so basically we have two different uh, appearances. So if you take a look at this idle animation, so let's go and take a look at that. If I press play, you could see we have our idle animation. Now, if I go over to our idle attack and take a look at that, you see the animation is different, right? So while our weapon's active, we want idle attack to be equal to true, um, or at least our idle uh, setup for that equal to true. And of course, this one to be equal to true if it's false. So let's take a look at that. Um, for our first transition, we're going to transition over from idle to idle attack. So right here, make sure that you do have has exit time off. And you're going to notice we have three conditions. So weapon active is equal to true, is idle is equal to true, and falling is equal to false. Now, if you don't have a falling animation for your character, you don't have to worry about applying this uh, right here. If you do have a falling animation, you will need to apply it there. And of course, heading back from idle attack to idle, it's pretty much vice versa, except of course, falling's not involved. Um, weapon active is equal to false, is idle is equal to true, and of course has exit time off. And if you want to, you can add is falling is equal to false as well. It doesn't really matter too much. And of course, attach to your idle attack, just like you would have on your idle normal, um, you're just going to attach this idle attack to your walk, your run, your jump, uh, whatever you want it to be, to be attached to. But keep in mind, if you have separate animations for your um, attack phase, so say for instance, if you have a separate running uh, version of your run for your attacking and all, eh, it's, that's a weird way of saying it. Okay, say for instance, you have an animation for just normal walking without any weapons. Or say for instance, you have an animation for if you're walking with a weapon, right? So depending on if you're walking with a weapon or without a weapon, make sure that you have your animation set up for that. So um, if you don't have separate animations, just attach them like I did. So idle attack still goes to walk, still goes to run, still goes to jump. And they return back, of course, if our weapon is active, right? Uh, now, if you have separate ones, on the other hand, just don't attach them to the originals and just say, you know, if weapon is active, otherwise return to whichever one of these are. Just a whole lot more transitions that you're going to have to deal with. Anyway, uh, let's go and get on to the next one. So this attack animation is very simple. Um, if you take a look at the transition between idle attack and attack, you're going to just notice it has one condition and of course has exit time off. You just need that as a plus key. Go over to the trigger, attack, boom, bada bing, done. And of course, 
attack back to idle, you want to have has exit time. Of course, attack to idle air, you're going to take off has exit time, and of course, falling is equal to true. Um, that's, of course, if you're falling, um, and you have an animation for that. And of course, if you're going to be going into running, or if you're going to be going into walking, uh, you need to make sure that you do have attack that drops back into those. Um, otherwise, it's going to be having an issue trying to find that. And of course, just plug in the animations to go back to wherever, depending on what's going on. So say, for instance, we're going back to walk, right? So is walk is equal to true? Is idle is equal to false? Is falling is equal to false? If we're going back to run, is walk is equal to false? Is idle is equal to false? Is falling is equal to false? And if you notice, unlike idle, we're actually going to untick this has exit time. The reason why is because idle, we're going to be staying still. While if we're walking, we want to continue walking forward. We don't want it to uh, sit there and finish out the animation. So we're still standing still while attacking. It, it just doesn't make sense. So just make sure that you tick that little thing off and it will work. All right, let's go and check it out again one more time so you guys can see this. So we equip our weapon, unequip our weapon, and of course walk up to whichever weapon we want. Um, e, equip it. Of course, we run over this way. Perfect, just like so. And you can just attack and do whatever you want with it. Let's go and attack the skeleton. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you guys next time.